I'm as far along in this game as I've ever been. From this point forward, everything is going to be brand new uh, to, to me. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to set up our final uh, steel production line before we uh, then wrap up our steel factory building and finalize that and then move on to oil stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, the plan here is to put in um, another stator uh, production line, and then I have a, uh, a rotor production line that I've also made in the blueprint, which is two pieces. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stator right here in front of the other one. And then we'll just, um, you know, use some splitters and, and keep extending the resources through. And then we're going to put the rotor line on th this side. The rotor lines, um, like I said, is made up of two pieces. So it comes out to about the end of the, the factory on this end. And then after those two things are in place, all we have to do is plop down an assembler to make the motors and we're done and i think i'm going to put the assembler right in this corner here there is room for it it's a little tight but it should work because i don't want to you know set up another section just for one machine i mean we could do that i suppose um i don't know we'll see that that's the plan but uh, you know i might change my mind on that all right, so let's go ahead and just run, get right started with this. I'm going to come up to here and stand in this corner. And we're gonna to go to our blueprints to electrical parts and grab our stator blueprint. Um, okay, hold on a sec. So we don't have any wall here and we just have this here. So let's just remove that for the time being. And then all of that rest of that should be clear. Okay, so let's just scooch this right on into this corner. It wants to, it's trying to snap. Oh, you know what? I think we can nudge these actually. If we just put it there and press H. Oh yeah, look at that, we can nudge it. That's wonderful. Oh, nudge exceeds maximum distance. Really? Okay, so I guess you can only nudge it so far, huh? All right, let's try that again. It's it's just that when I get too far back here, it wants to like snap, so it's kind of screwing up. Okay, that's that's where we want it here. I just don't know how far this way. Okay, probably right there. Okay, let's check it. Uh. I think that's correct. And then we just nudge it back to here and we're golden. All right, fantastic. I don't know why I didn't think about nudging entire blueprints earlier because I've been doing it with other things, but I didn't. And uh, I think you guys actually mentioned that in the comments too. Reminded me of that. Um, all right, cool. So that's in place. Now what we need to do is, let's, uh, remove that and in fact we're going to want to remove all of this stuff here because that was intended for the back wall and uh, yeah this can go too because this is our our border let's bring that all the way out now Very good. So we just need to drop a splitter um, off of this, uh, these ingots here. And uh, oh, it looks like I, looks like I ha I kept the splitter on there from my testing earlier. So that's that's fine. That's not a problem at all. And I should be we should be able to use Mark One for all of this. I'll double check that. So drop that down to there. And put this splitter here and put it that way. Let me actually double check that. I'm pretty sure we 
can get use Mark 1 for this. I did screw something up that I ca caught and fixed later. And yeah, see that's only taking in 15 per minute, but because it's overclocked, it's outputting 75 per minute. And when I initially set this up, I used Mark 1 on the output, which is only 60 per minute. So this machine was stalling on me, and I was trying to figure out why the hell it was stalling, and that's why. So again, yeah, you just really gotta watch that stuff because it'll one little mistake like that can really mess up everything else. Or at least, you know, make make your design not work as efficiency as if at 100% efficiency okay um, look at that that works perfectly okay so that gets the the ingots coming in there um, I believe I believe we have oh geez I don't remember how many ingots we have coming in it's at least 120 because I have a one a mark two line at least uh, so we're only tapping into 30 in total, 15 on each of these. So we're fine as far as that goes. That takes care of that. Okay, let's do the iron uh, next. So really, we're just going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to, um, let's see, we need to tap into here. So probably, let's just get rid of that altogether. Let's just drop a splitter, or not a splitter, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, actually, we do need a splitter uh, on here. Just probably right in the middle there is fine. And then we'll get a lift, bring that down. And again, I think we're fine with Mark 1 stuff with all of this. Why don't we take... This is a, a foundry that's taking in, yeah, it's underclocked, so it's taking in 30 per minute. And once I set this up, it's, this is going to completely tap out the iron line. No, I think it might still leave us like 15 iron left, but it'll completely tap out the coal line. I mean, use it at max capacity, or maybe it's vice versa. I can't remember which off the top of my head. Uh, it would be the... It'd be the coal line because we had 270 coal. We're using uh, 200, and then we used another 30 and 30, so 60. So yeah, there's actually 10 left on this coal line. And whether or not I actually do anything with that, I don't know. That's that would be kind of hard to figure out. I mean, I guess I could put it in a an overflow, but for what purpose, right? I'm not sure. Anyway, okay. We're going to turn this, we're going to connect this up there and bring it down to here, like so. And you, what was that again? That was 30, right? Yeah, 30 iron ore per minute. So we're fine with Mark 1. Let's bring that over to here. Uh, one. No, you know what? That's not lined up right. That's the line there. So one, two back. And then in. Yeah, that was lining up on something else. That takes care of the iron input. And then for the coal, we shall do the same thing. Um, yeah, let's just put a splitter up here. Right about in the middle. Drop that down and point it that way. And let's see, we'll come to now that's not gonna work because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to S this one. Alright, so let's take this and put it there maybe. Remove the thing there. Then we'll put this one here. And that one there. There we go. 
Okay, so that gets the coal. And I think that's it. That's all we got to do. We just got to hook the power up. And that's our second uh, stator line. But this one is going to be used, of course, to feed into the motor production. Uh, looks like all I have to actually do is... Well, that one's maxed out. Oh, wait, this was, yeah, these poles were already here. Uh, or, well, this pole, wait, what? How'd that pole get on there? It was already there. I think I left it there from when I tested it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was confusing myself. That's what happened. All right, so let's uh, hook you up, and we'll hook you up, and we'll hook you up, and we'll hook you up. There we go. All right, that's it. And those blueprints are nice. Make this so much faster. Let's just double check, make sure everything's working. So we're getting our Caterium in. Um, I do believe that I changed this to a Mark II in the blueprint, but let's just, yeah, see that's Mark II. The lifts are also Mark II, so we should be good. Should be good to go. And you're getting in your quick wire. Your steel pipe should be showing up here pretty soon because this guy's working on it. And we got all, we got our stator. So we're just going to let this... Uh, we'll just let it stall out for now uh, until we're ready to hook it up. But I think uh, everything's working. Okay. Now, let's come over here. I'm going to take all of this down. And I still haven't decided yet what I'm going to do underneath here. What I'm probably going to do is put pillars down uh, to support the floor above it at intervals that make sense and not use walls at all. But I might separate each section with, ra uh, with, with rails. And then just leave it all open down here. That's kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking. All right, let's go over here. And we're gonna grab our rotor supply part A. Okay, let's turn this around. I should be able to nudge it from there. Come back and that should be perfect. Oh, you know what? I Actually, it isn't. I forgot to put my concrete uh, border. So what we're going to do is pre uh, press F, and then we're going to press R to go into blueprint mode, and we can remove the whole thing in one fell swoop. Also something that uh, you guys recently reminded me of in the comments to do. Um, super useful. Yeah, let's make, make sure we have our, our border here. We'll just send it to there for, for now. And then we gotta pop this into this corner here. It might be easier if we do that from up above. So let's head up there. All right, let's do this again. Blueprints, rotor supply 10 per minute part A. That should be perfect. Excellent. Okay. Now, let's just pop part B in, and then I'll show you what's going on here. Uh, or, yeah, sorry, part B. Yeah. And that's going to go... Whoop. All right, let's nudge it from there. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'm using my alternate copper rotor recipe, and I've underclocked this to produce 10 per minute. Um, and this, if I didn't already point this out, um, this also produces 10 per minute. 
reason for that is because the motor recipe requires 10 rotors and 10 stators as its input, so it matches perfectly. Whoop, save. Let's uh, get you out there and you back to there. All right, so this one is was a little a little trickier in terms of the mathematics here. Uh, the copper sheet's uh, easy peasy limit squeezy. Um, it's just set it to 20 per minute, and that's exactly what these guys do. Well, they do. Wait, no, copper sheets. Copper sheets over here. Uh, these do 10 per minute with just you know with no un under or overclocking. So I just have two uh, together producing 20 per minute, and they both take in a total of 40 copper ingots. Okay. Um, and so this guy is uh, underclocked to produce 20 per minute, and this one's underclocked to produce 20 per minute. So these are just directly feeding into each one of the constructors at 20 per minute. So very simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Copper sheeting. So the screws, however, uh, are a little more involved, mathematically speaking, because what I decided to do is I, I have two alternate recipes. I have the really good... Uh, screw recipe that produces like a shit ton of screws. Here, let's just look at it. Um, 260 screws per minute with just one steel beam. That is a really, really good recipe for screws, but you know, you got to set all the stuff up to make the steel beams. So basically, you know, you've got to smelt, uh, you need a smelter. Uh, no, you don't need a smelter, but you need a foundry and you have to feed in coal right yeah to make that right so if this was a, a little bit bigger operation it would be worth doing but in this case i just used the alternate recipe too which just makes 50 screws using five iron ingots but this guy needs 173.333 screws per minute um, in order to you know uh, match the underclocking of this recipe so what i've done is i've set up then three constructors I've overclocked each one of those to produce 57.78 per minute. And if we uh, look at that times three, that brings us up to 173.34, 173.333. So close enough. I'm not going to worry about, you know, thousandths or ten thousandths of a place. Um, yeah. Okay. So we have three of those. Now, um, these guys take in... Uh, 14.445 iron ingots per minute. All right, so if we do 14.445 times 3, that's 43.335. And so what I have going on here is I've got these guys um, underclocked to produce 21.67 per minute, which if you multiply that by 2, it comes out to the 43.35. Okay, so I had to do a little more math on this, but... Uh, it all came together, and when I hooked it up to, and tested it earlier, it all seemed to be working. So uh, we should be good to go. <laughs> all right, let's get our inputs hooked up back here first. So we need to hook up two coppers, and we have a copper on the second to the top line, and we need to hook up two iron, and we're going to have to tap into the, the second iron conveyor down there because this one is completely tapped out. Uh, we're using every last bit of that with everything we've got hooked up. Uh, but we have another one to spare, and you guys have told me in the comments there's even yet another pure iron node somewhere up there that I can tap into later. I just haven't went to, to actually try and find it yet. Let's do the two coppers first, or sorry, the two irons first. They'll just go into there. And um, let's see, do I already have... Oh, that's going right into the lift. Okay. Um, actually, too, what we're going to do here is we're going to, yeah, we need to bring, pull this wall back uh, with the same setup that it currently has. Um, let's actually leave, oh, no, I don't want to do a blueprint take down just an individual. We'll leave the bottom part of this wall off for now until we get it hooked up. All right, guys, I'm back. I had to go somewhere. In real life for a while. Uh, all right, what are we doing? We we just set down the uh, rotor thingy, and we got we got to get stuff hooked up. That's what we're doing. Okay, so let me go back up there and look again. 
I had to step away for a few hours, so I gotta remember what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. I forget shit like that. Easy. Uh, all right, okay, so we're hooking up two iron and two copper, I think, right? Yep. That's what we're doing. Okay. Um, so let's come back down here. And we're doing this bottom iron here. That's, uh, why don't we bring the lift, the lifts down lower so that way they're at the same level as the, as the belt is. So I think that's going to be that level, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Oh, I have something else I want to I want to show you guys too. Uh, concerning the conveyor belts, uh, or the lifts rather, conveyor lifts. But uh, let's let's keep going on this first, so I don't get sidetracked too badly. Okay, so that lines up nice for us. And this one should also line up for us. Oh, I love it when that happens. It makes life so much easier. All right, and you can go straight into there. You can go straight into there. We're not going to be able to use... I don't think this will work. Yeah, see, that's not going to work. Because the conveyor hole's too low. All right, not a big deal. So we'll just put solid walls up there. These should work though, because I think we can just bring the lifts down to the conveyor holes from the, what the hell? Dude, get in there. <laughs> that was weird. Um, okay, so yeah, we need another splitter. Is this one gonna line up for us? Oh, yes, it does. Beautiful. Okay. Wait a minute, though. That's not the right... We need the row right below it. There we go. And this one is right here. Hmm. That one's... That one's not lining up. Okay. Well, we can eyeball it if we just... Uh, I wonder why that one's not lining up. We just make sure that the green line's right about in the center of the conveyor hole. We should be okay. Yeah, that works. And that should be copper coming in. Beautiful. All right, so that takes care of the uh, resource inputs. Now we need to hook this stuff up here. Um, but I need to remember what's going where. Let's pull these two things up. So these are the two that are doing... Yeah, the two that are doing iron and they're just going... All right, okay, they're going into... here yes right okay so then I think the way I did that was that I put a splitter down here maybe no a merger yeah all right let's lock that in place for a second that is about the right spot that needs to be. Okay. And we'll reattach this. And then run a belt into there. Got a nice little 90 degree there. Okay, that looks good. Um, now, we need a splitter here. 
because this is going to get merged into these three whoops there we go uh, merged into these three constructors all right so let's move that back to there and looks like it's lined up properly there okay we're just talking 30 uh I think we're just talking 30 ingots. Yeah. Uh, well. No. Okay, hold on a sec. I got to make sure. I'm pretty sure Mark 1 will still work for this, but I just got to double check it. Actually, maybe it won't. Will it? Yeah, no, it should. Let me just double check it anyway. Yeah, you're only producing 21.6, and you're doing 21.6. So, yeah, Mark 1's going to be fine for that. I just needed to double check it. All right, and then let's reset you. And you and you. And that doesn't clip, it does clear it. If barely. Okay, so that feeds the iron. Um, oh, wait a second. Yeah, we're going to have to redo this. But that feeds the iron ingots into the three constructors that are making the screws for us. All right, why don't we take this out? You are right on this line here. Go back to. That's not going to work because it's too close. We might have to. I think this is where we want to go. Okay, let's go back to here. Too close. Still too close. There we go. All right. So we have to kind of do a little bit of an S curve into there. <clears throat> that should be fine. Okay. So that feeds the iron ingots into the three constructors making the screws. And everything else, I think, or, uh, well, almost everything else is hooked up. So this is the three constructors outputting the screws into a, uh, into this lift which then goes into mm, what is that going into oh yeah sorry it comes out here and goes into the assembler right here for the screws now we just need to hook up the copper uh, into this lift here so we'll put a merger right here Bump it back to there. Reposition this. Run that belt into there. That's nice. Nice 90. And then bring this to here. It's not showing me the line. So the line's right here. And then go back to and into there. I think th I think that's it. 
think that hooks everything up. So let me just double check. So we got the iron ore coming in to the two iron smelters. We got the copper ore coming into the two copper smelters. The two iron smelters are outputting the ingots. Merging along this line, going into here, and then that's feeding into three constructors making screws. The screws are output to three constructors on this line, and then go um, uh, yeah, and then go out here into here. It's a little bit uh, weird how I set this up, but it's because uh, why do I have a smart splitter there? Uh, I don't think I meant to put a smart splitter there. That should be a normal splitter. Um, yeah, it's just kind of the the way the spacing worked out. There, there may be a, a little better layout, but this is the one I came up with, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rethink it. <laughs> not at this point, anyway. But yeah, we don't need a smart splitter here. That was just an accident on my part. Um, so let's do this. We'll put a normal splitter below it first. And then we'll put, uh, let's see, we want the, yeah, we want that to go like that. And then we're just going to have to reconnect all this again, just to make sure it's all behaving. Sometimes it, you can get away with not reconnecting it, but I like to do it just to be on the safe side. Save glitch there. Okay. I think we're good down here. Let's go upstairs, hook up the power, and make sure it's all working. All right. Let's run these all the way down to the end here. Good. Okay. Now we've got one connector here. So let's run that down to here. And we'll run another one down to here. Look that up. And these three. Um, that's going to need to turn into a Mark II. Make sure nothing's clipping. That looks good. I can also run another pull here, but I think I'll just keep it that way. Okay, that can go there. And then let's get another one right... Here. And another one right about here. And one more. And then we also need to run one forward to there. Uh, no clipping. Okay, I think we're good. to there and I think that's it all right so that smelter's working that one's working let's make copper copper you should be making copper sheeting you should be making copper sheeting you should be making screws, screws, and screws. Okay, we're getting our first screws coming into the assembler. We should see copper sheeting pop in. There it goes. Okay, I think I think we got it. The final piece here 
is to put in the assembler to make the motors. Now, we could do one of two things. I have spaced these beams apart every fifth window. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So really we should put a beam right here. And then, so the question now is, I was going to redo one of these beams too, because one of them was, yeah, it's this one here. I didn't attach that one correctly. That one's on the corner, so I guess it can stay the way that it is. So the problem is, if you know if we want to keep this spacing even we really need to go out three more windows and therefore three more floors um and so if we could use this space for the motor the motors i mean because we have a lot of extra space here I'm out of plates. Okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll fix that later. So there is definitely, I mean, tons of room over here for the motors. But there's also room if we wanted to, you know, put something else over here in the future. So I'm kind of inclined to just leave it open for now for that reason. Um... So my plan, I think, is to go ahead and put the motor assembler right here in this corner. Um, so I think I'm going to do that, and then if I change my mind later, then we'll, we'll deal with it later. I think that's the right position I want on this. Oh, I need plates for that, too. Okay, let me go get some iron plates. Okay, so we'll put that conveyor hole there. That one can go there. That one can go there. Um, actually, no. These can go a little closer than they are. There we go. Okay, we want to set this to motors. Ten rotors, ten stators per minute. Let's get rid of all this for the moment, if not permanently. So this this will work because it, it comes right evenly in between this belt here. So we can make this work without interfering with those belts. Let's remove this. And we want to connect to you. And I think... I think I want it to come down. I'm trying to remember how I did that to this level. Because we have to, I think we have to go underneath this belt here. Alright, let's get that up there. And I think this one we want to bring to here, maybe? It just barely, barely clips into the corner of that, but I think I'm not going to worry about that. Right, because we have to come over the top of this and wrap around to here. I think that's what the deal is with that. All right, so this is outputting the stators. So this one will be easier to hook up, so we'll do this one first. Um, let's take this... that in there and bring it down to here and pointing that direction 
I don't know which one of those lines is the right one. It's... I think it's... I think it's this. Okay, here. Let me get right here. Okay, back to... Nice 90. Look at all those staters just waiting. Okay, so that takes care of that one. And then um, we need to get the rotors that are kind of going to come out of here over to there. So once again, let's hook this up and bring it down to this level. And probably want to point that direction. All right, hold on a sec. I could actually you could do this one of two ways. Why don't we turn this around? This way. Eh, I don't like that clipping. That's a little bit too much for my sensibilities. All right, we're gonna do this the other way then. We're gonna bring this all the way, whoops. Hook into, no, not into the hole, into the, there we go. Let's just bring this down to the bot, the floor. That's gonna be, make things easy on us. Okay. I like to keep things off the floor if I can, but sometimes it just makes the best sense to bring them all the way down. All right, very good. Now we have a nice line here that we can come out to there. Go back to, and I think, I think that's straight. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't quite reach. You know what, too? Um, is that a 90? Yeah, it is a 90. It just doesn't reach. Okay, no problem take it down as far as it'll go, which is <laughs> so close, man. So damn close. Okay. No problem. Um, let's see. The wall's going to be here. So let's just push that back one. And that should do the trick. Oh my god. What did I just do? Move that over one. For Pete's sake, um, go here, grab this, now we're good, right, right, and that brings in our rotors. Got to hook some power up to our motors. And then the final thing, of course, will be to run it to storage. Um, we could use this pole here, but we're going to have to upgrade it to a Mark II. Okay, let's get that floor back in. floor can go back in and that floor very good and we're making motors look at that hot damn okay so the final step here is to bring these over to storage Okay, so I'm gonna, um, let's just leave that like that for the moment. What I wanna do is I wanna merge this onto the same line that's doing the industrial beams and the staters, which is this line here. Cause I just, 
saw some staters go through there. Back to, yeah. Because then that drops down here and goes up into the center belt here, which is the one we're aiming for. Right. Okay, so that means what we want to do then is have the game save, first of all. We're going to put a splitter up here, or no, a merger. And we'll just put it right about the center because we can. And I think, I think this has to go up one. Is that a 90? No, not quite. So we are right here. Let's go back to and that's going to have to go. That looks good. Okay. Let's put this guy back in place. And there's one final step. And that is to go over here and set this to motor. And our work here is done, ladies and gentlemen. We should see motor come into this in just a little bit. I think I saw the first one being sent down the line. Yep, there's a motor right there. Okay. So if I set up my smart splitter, I did. I set up my smart, smart splitter already for motors. Our work here is truly done. No, actually it's not. <laughs> The factory setup is done. We still got to do the building. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here because um, cause I want to give a little bit of thought to how I'm going to do this building. And then we will get it fixed up and completed in the next episode. And it'll be... Well, technically, it'll be our second, you know, completed factory of the series because, you know, we, we did our first factory over in Rocky Desert, though that's kind of a smorgasbord of a bunch of different things, whereas this is a dedicated steel production factory, making steel parts for us to use, at, at, you know, for building other things. Before I let you go, though, um, let's see. What do we want to work? Okay, we're actually... Yeah, that's right. We looked at this the other day. We can't really do anything more at all with this until we get going on plastic. So, depending upon how long it takes me to finish this building out, um, we may be able to get started with plastic in the next episode. We'll see. What I might even do... Uh, you know what we could do? We could just run out there and set up a real quick temporary thingy just to get that stuff going. Um, before we set up the real, you know, the the real deal. Just so we can keep advancing their milestones. Cause I really want to get to the to the jetpack and you know some of that more advanced stuff. Uh, okay. Plastic. I think what we can do... 
Right, so what we can do is we can make plastic with oil, with crude oil, and that will produce heavy oil residue as a byproduct, and then we can turn around and use the heavy oil residue to create other products. Um, that we, you know, like, I, I think we can create like a fuel with it. We can create that special kind of coal stuff, which isn't really all that useful. It's like a, a cheaper version of coal. Yeah, you know what, guys? I, I, I need, I need to give this some thought. Before I, I don't want to just go blind because I'll be hemming and hawing and. It'll make the episode go too long, and you guys will pull your hair out. <laughs> uh, so I need to give that some thought and kind of be at least semi-prepared, even even for setting up something temporary, just because, you know, it's more involved. Um, and that uh, that brings up one other thing I just want to mention to you guys. I am at the point in this game, I'm as far along in this game as I've ever been. The last time I played this in Update 5, I got to... Uh, to oil, you know, tier five, and I think I even unlocked it, and then I, I stopped playing. I never actually set up anything with oil. So from this point forward, everything is going to be brand new uh, to, to me. I, I've never done it before, which is going to be exciting. I'm very interested in learning how to do it. I will be, you know, um, I, I'm not going to do it blind. I, I am going to, you know, look it up and, you know, get some advice, maybe watch a couple of other YouTubes too. I, I just, I don't have the desire to, to do it completely blind. Because this game is, you know, it's too complex for that. I, I just don't have the time or the patience for it. So I want to at least have a clue before I start working on it myself. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Now, I do want to show you guys one more thing before I let you go. Um, I was told in the comments after the video, the video where I was setting up those really long conveyor lines, vertical conveyor lines, that you can, there is a way to... To hook those up without having to make connections in between um, and so the way you do that is let's build a really high wall one that's higher than you know than the belts th themselves can do okay and I'm uh, am I in fly mode yeah I'm actually going to fly mode for a minute um, just to demonstrate this because it's gonna go quicker all right so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna grab a uh, uh, just a one meter foundation and then we're going to set a floor hole right in the center of it. Okay, now let's go all the way back down. And we'll set a floor hole there too. Okay, so. What I was doing wrong here was that I was connecting the lift. And I was trying to pull the lift itself all the way up to the hole and it wasn't working because see that's where it stops that's its maximum length but if you take your cursor and you aim it at the hole look at that then it goes all the way up really cool huh so somebody somebody brought that up in the comments of, of that video and uh, sure enough you can actually hook these up uh, as high up as as you can see um, but you do have to have a good clear um, you know, visual on the hole. If, if it's so damn high up you can't see it, then it doesn't work. Uh, which means, you know, it, it, on a really, really high wall like the one we did over there, you're still going to have to have, you know, sections part way up, but you don't need as many as, you know, what I was doing. So that's pretty cool that you can still do that. I just, I didn't realize that that was how you had to do that. You had, you know, you have to aim your cursor at the hole as opposed to trying to lift the, the lift itself. And it works both ways too. I can also go from the top down to the bottom. See, it'll only go that it'll only go that far unless I aim at the hole, and then boom, and it pops in. So really cool. I wanted to just show that to you guys, and I will certainly be you know utilizing that myself in future builds where we have you know a lot of verticality going on. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye bye.